What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode number three of this animation power tip series. This series is actually sponsored by Autodesk. So thanks very much Autodesk for sponsoring this series. And if you haven't watched episode number one and number two, do that before you jump into this one because this series are supposed to be sequential and every episode is supposed to help you a little bit more. Now, in episode number three, we are gonna jump into the graph editor and how it can actually help you the most as a brand new animator that actually just came in or an experienced animator that would like some tips and tricks on how to actually make your workflow better. Also, as I mentioned last time, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Let's get to it. It's all written. Yeah, my life matters created in his own image. It's not the way you So here we are once again, episode number three. Feels so good to be back here uh, teaching you guys a little bit more about how to actually get this uh, Maya set up correctly and um, to actually hopefully shortcut you guys into like a better way to animate, a cleaner way to animate. Give me suggestions uh, on the comments down below on what would you like to see next in this series, what would be more useful? Uh, because obviously, you know, Maya animation, the whole shebang is always changing. So it would be good to know what you guys actually feel is the most important thing for you guys uh, to learn here in this uh, series. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to use those uh, hotkeys on the graph editor so you don't have to think about simple stuff like adding keys or deleting keys. Um, that stuff is incredibly um, annoying when it comes to actually repetition. So you wanna make sure that you streamline that stuff the best way you can. Let's get to it, let's start. So here, once again, I'm in my Maya scene, completely vanilla. And uh, your graph editor, I highly suggest you guys, for the ones that are just getting started, to go into your windows, go into your animation editors, and add your graph editor to your shelf, as you can see here. The only thing you have to do to do that is basically on PC, you do Control Shift, and on Mac, you do um, Apple Shift in order to actually add the button to your shelf here. So at that point you have, I only have graph editor and the script editor here because I wanna keep it simple for you guys, but as you work on your Maya skills and you actually make them better, you're gonna have your own shelf of things that you would like to um, add in order to simplify your life. So you don't have to do all the time, like going up to Windows and then animation and then graph editor. That is about three or four different things that you need to do to get to one window. If you have here on your window, it means on your shelf, it means that you can just click it and it will open up straight away. So this is the graph editor for all the ones that uh, don't know. Obviously you should know, you're an animator. You can go through um, your graph editor by clicking on your timeline and dragging it, or going through here on the top and dragging it as well. But you have to make sure it's on top, here on the bottom doesn't really work. Now I'm gonna open an animation just to make sure that we can um, see um, how it looks when you have some curves. So let me see. So I'm gonna showcase my NURBS curves right here. And I'm gonna to go to the head because you're gonna see the head changing. Now, when you select a controller, no matter what controller it is, your curves will actually uh, showcase here on your graph editor. Um, and a couple of things that you need to know on the graph editor. So if you go to view, make sure to always have auto frame curve. Otherwise your curves are gonna display in a very weird way. So if you have them like this and you change controller, you can see that the curves are not framed anymore. Um, let me select another one, see? So you have to constantly press F, which means framing, just in case um, you guys didn't know, uh, to showcase your curves. So make sure that you always uh, go to view and out of frame, which is very useful. Um, absolute view is completely fine. You can change views here if you like stacked view um, or normalized view. It depends on what you're doing really. Absolute view works fine from 90% of the time, uh, but if your curves look weird, then change your view. Now on to the actual um, editing of the curves. So for example, let me just look at this curve right here. Right? 
We remember last week uh, on episode number two, if you haven't watched it, go and check it out. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, we added two um, scripts and one was to the lead keys and we mapped it to the key B. And then another one was to add keys and we mapped it to N. So um, once again, if I go to uh, B, I delete keys. So this is me pressing B. And if I go to N, I add keys. So you have to have your, your graph selected, but you add keys. So the reason why this is useful is that whenever you actually are editing any graph editor, the thing that you do the most is uh, go between keys and delete keys or add keys, like I mentioned in Malice video. So in order to move between keys while you have your graph editors uh, open, you press X or C. Your hand wants to be on the left hand of your keyboard at all times. So X and C are very much there on the, on the left hand of the keyboard. So is V and B and N. So you have to move very little in order to actually go between the keys. So the first, the first thing that I, that I'll do in order to actually edit this curve is to constantly go between keys. So I know what I'm doing and I can see it in the graph editor at all times. Now, for example, if I actually want to delete this key regularly, I would have to actually press backspace. Now, I don't want to do that all the time because my hand has to travel from like being on the left hand side of my keyboard to backspace to then back. So this is why we actually added the key delete to our keyboard. So now I can actually just shift my, my finger and delete. And same thing here. I don't want this key, let's say, I can delete that. And I, I can constantly do that as I go through and delete my keys, the ones that I don't, I don't want. I can actually select more than one. Let's say I don't want these three keys. I can press B and delete those. Now, let's say that I want to, for example, manipulate this curve further. So if you actually want to change this key position, you can press shift and move the key, right? So I actually kind of manipulate the curve further, or you can actually add keys to this place. Normally, you would actually have to go here to the add key button, activate it, go to this, this curve, activate the curve, and then add your key with the middle mouse button. That is way too many clicks to actually add one, one key especially as you're animating really quickly and you have to go through so many curves, you don't want to do that all the time. So instead, what we're going to do is deactivate this key here, right? Go back to A, go back to A and deactivate the key. And now we have that new key or new uh, hot key uh, N to add keys. So if I actually call N, I can add the key there without having to activate mode, select key, da 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 da. So um, I can do that anywhere I want and as many times I want. Now, this script is especially awesome because what it does is actually not add keys to one curve. Yeah, it's called slice curve for a reason. So it looks like it's just adding one key at that point. But if you have more than one curve selected and you want to add a key, a key to a specific place, let's say, I'm just going to delete all of these. Let's say I want to add a key to these three curves um, in, at this point, right? If I press N, which is the same key that I pressed before to add the one key, it adds it to all the curves that you have selected. So that is the beauty of this uh, script. So no matter how many curves you have, even if you select the whole character and you have all curves selected, if you press N, you will add a key to all those curves as if it's slicing through them on this one key on 75. And you can do that as well as many times as you want. So that is basically what I would do in the most simplest way to actually uh, edit your curves. So you should go through and like here, don't want that key, delete, you continuously go through. Um, let me see, I don't want that one, delete. I don't want that one, delete. Um, I want to maybe uh, delete, delete this one, delete this one, but oops, oh no, I need to add another one. So because it's so quick, I can actually just press N and get another key back. So as you see, I'm looking at my screen and I'm not even looking at my keyboard and I'm actually editing my curves without having to do anything else. And I can still do the usual stuff, which is actually getting to my, to my uh, tangents, making sure my tangents are clean, making sure that I actually 
easing in or easing out correctly um, and I can manipulate my, my curves the correct way, the way that I know how, the best way that I know how. So make sure that you actually keep that in mind. Make sure that you actually select your keys correctly as you need to. And um, if you need to actually kind of uh, add keys or delete keys, it should be quite easy. So these two scripts will allow you to constantly go through them and allow you to kind of like start manipulating your curves a little bit better than you used to before. So this is kind of how I would go about manipulating the keys on the graph editor based on the shortcuts that we learned from the last episode. Um, once again, I'll link down below uh, the scripts, these two scripts by Aaron, a great resource for all animators. There's a bunch of scripts on his page from way like back in the day, 2004. Nowadays, you can uh, find uh, animation tool belts that can do the same thing, but uh, these two scripts are so specific that they are still useful and they're incredibly light as well. They don't really weigh a lot on your Maya. They don't slow down your Maya and they work 100% of the time. So that is the best thing about the scripts. I think this is enough for you guys to actually get your brains thinking about it and go now to a Maya scene that you have animated and make sure that you use these scripts and make sure that you use them thoroughly. So if you spend the next week or two training your brain to know about the hotkeys and know where they are. At that point, you'll probably be flying when it comes to cleaning your curves. Now, last tip for you guys in this video is the tangent button. So if you guys are working on a stepped, so if you go here and you put all your keys to stepped, just for an, as an example, um, so you're working on stepped, you're setting up your animation, working on your poses, all that good stuff. There's two ways to go about you making your animation smooth or going into that spline step. Um, there is the way that you select everything, all your curves and then spline, right? Or there is a way of more granular um, kind of uh, adding spline to each curve or each controller as you go. Now, there's a very easy way to do it because uh, remember on the last episode, what we mapped the spline button to the key V. So you can actually, instead of selecting everything and putting everything on spline, you can just like go through sections and see if that section works in spline by pressing V, as easy as that. You just press V and then you kind of go, yes, I like it or I don't like it, or I can delete keys or add keys or manipulate them, or then go back to your, to your blocking and go like, actually the spacing between this key and this key is perhaps a little too much or not enough. So you can just quickly move your keys up and down or select these three keys, change them, see how they actually work with each other and actually select, change that bit but not more than that bit, just that, that little section there to make sure that the, the spacing, the timing is correct. Make sure that everything is kind of flowing. So you're like, okay, I'm happy with that thing. What is this big space here? This big space maybe needs a little bit more of loving, more keys in between. So let me just add a little bit more of a, of a anticipation and spacing love right there. One key there, like he's favoring more of that key and one key there and it's favoring more at the key after. So it's a bit more of a push timing in between those two keys. We should bode better for the animation. And that is all I had for you guys this week. As always, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below with anything else you guys want me to cover on the following weeks. Uh, thanks out to Autodesk for sponsoring this video once again. And until next week, stay well, stay safe, peace.